Welcome back to this week's YouTube video. We are visiting, or should I say revisiting, my teeny tiny laundry nook that hides in this awkward little nook in my kitchen. I got a flash to a before. This before is from last year when it was really bad. It was shotgun bad. <laughs> and I gave it a little organization and a zhuzh up, but a couple of things didn't work, which you're gonna see in the video, and I needed to just tweak them, refix them, and that's what I'm gonna show you. In fairness, I managed to maintain it pretty good. It's not looking too bad. I'm gonna get straight into the video. Also, if you're new to my channel, please do check out my recent videos, and if you like what you see, then hit the subscribe button. Also, because Easter Sunday is this weekend, I am not gonna do a Sunday video because I am going to take Easter off, but what I was thinking of doing was doing like just a longer garden video for the following Sunday. I ordered some plants. <laughs> I have a plant delivery coming on Thursday and I still have lots of other little jobs to do. There's always something to do. So there won't be a garden video on Sunday, but I think I'll do a longer video for the following weekend. But you can check out, I'll pop the playlist in the description as well as links for everything in this video. So you can check out the other videos if you have missed them. As I have, I've uploaded quite a, a couple more videos than usual the past couple of weeks. So I'm sure there might be something that you've missed. Okay, present day laundry nook featuring <laughs> Miss Blondie. Hey. Okay, there's just some supplies that Blondie is checking out that's at the counter. But we come around here, we have the nook, the infamous nook, and we come in. It's not as bad as last time. So a couple of things, actually, this isn't too bad, but I made a couple of mistakes last time. As you can see, and a couple of you guys did say this in the comments, and thank you for that. I wanted to see how, <laughs> how, how bad it could get. It's not too bad. I did flip it a few times. So the shelf that I put in was too thin, and as you can see, it has bowed in the middle. And I was having a little look online to see if you could, <clears throat> how to fix like bowed shelves. So obviously the weight of cat litter, even though I tried to use the lightweight cat litter and then some of the washing powder stuff is like too heavy. But not to worry, I have a thicker piece of wood. I'm gonna explain what happened. Originally, if you guys remember, I got my countertops changed in last week's video and the guy kindly took the old counter with him. My plan was to use the old piece of counter, cut it to size and put it here. But the, the guy was so kind and he took away all of the, like the old counter, the dirt. He cleaned up so well after himself and he was gone. And I was like, oh no, I forgot to say that I actually wanted to keep some of that counter. But anyway, basically what I need here is I need to just make this nice and tidy, hang up the brush, yeah, fix the shelf, I'm gonna cut a new one. I have some clear boxes for the likes of Blondie's food, Blondie's cat litter and washing stuff because that is all that's here. That cool Guinness thing, while it looks really cool, it isn't practical or functional, but I can put it into the greenhouse and we can use it there. Bird seed, that's now stored in the greenhouse, so I don't have to keep the bird seed thing, so I could even use this for um, like washing pods or whatever. So yeah, it just needs a little bit of a George, my tiny, my tiny laundry nook that only I can fit in. So I had some scrap. This is a good bit of scrap, isn't it? Um, this came with the really old wardrobe that's in my bedroom. Where I bought it second hand and it came with shelves, but I use that as a wardrobe. And it's lovely thick, like MDF. So this is how thin the last one I used was. And this is how thick this one is. So I'm hoping, I mean, that's countertop thickness, which was what, uh, 3.8 centimeters was how thick the old counter was. And I'd say this is like 
half the size so I'm hoping by using this thicker piece that it won't um, bow and also by not having <coughs> heavy stuff so I just took like everything out so I'm hoping I have three clear boxes here um, one for Blondie's Sood, one for Blondie's Cat Litter, one for my washing stuff and then I'll have I'm gonna hang these also I'm very excited about these pick these up off Amazon they are peel and stick tiles now a couple of you guys were saying about peel and stick tiles um, for my tile here but I don't think I'd use them on my main kind of kitchen especially around like the heat of the cooker but definitely I would use them for like things like this so I was thinking I just love the pattern of these so I am gonna paint I think the well I don't know whether to leave it wood I like the contrast of the wood but it is MDF so I might paint the shelf white and then just stick these tiles on the back just for like a little bit of something something they weren't expensive um, I think they might have been 10 or 15 pound maybe and there's a couple of them in the packet that's my plan just to give it a little something just to make it make it pretty these are peel and stick and I'll let you know how I get on with these Okay, here is the wood. Now, let's see some eagle eye people. <laughs> okay, so the first piece of wood you would have seen was too, wasn't deep enough. So, you know that thing, the TikTok thing's like, no one's gonna know. They're gonna know. <laughs> I had to, sorry, my camera won't focus in this nook. I think it's the lighting. I cut an extra piece of wood from another scrap um, MDF, same thickness that I had. No one's gonna know. No one's gonna know. <laughs> Basically, I just wanted to use the wood that I already have. I didn't want to go all the way to the DIY shop, spend on expensive wood. Let's not talk about the materials, <laughs> the prices. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it white because these are the stick-on tiles and they kind of have like a creamy white background. So I have some off-white like paint in my stash and I'm going to paint this while this is drying we can faux tile this little square here and see if that looks cute.
So it's kind of hard to film in here, but I hung up my sweeping brush. So that's handy. So I can clean it. Oh. <laughs> I <laughs> just whacked off the humor. That's how small it is. So I've just used a command hook on this. So sweet and brush has a home and it's not falling over. Now my mop does not have a hole in it. I also want to hang the mop. So I have my drill. I'm going to bring it outside and I'm going to drill a hole so that I can put like a tag on it and then hang it off the hook. So then I can hang my mop. So let me grab a peel and stick tile. So these peel and stick tiles, you can see they're quite thin. I, they're stickers, I wouldn't say they're peel and stick tiles. I have used the, they're not called knickknack, click clack, tick tock tiles, tic tac, tic tac tiles. They're on like Amazon and they're much thicker, stickier and plasticier and I use them, well, I ended up not using them. I had bought some to use in the kitchen makeover I did in my work canteen like two years ago and I tried sticking them on and they had the opposite problem. They were way too sticky so when you made a mistake they were hard to lift off. So these ones kind of have the opposite. I reckon like I stuck them to a wall and it did say on the packet that they can stick to wall, wood, ceramic, but there's not an awful lot of sticky in them. So if I was to put them above the cooker, I'd say after a lot of steam, <laughs> they will be peeling off. So I think these are fun if you have a small project, like these stuck on a tray, like a scrap piece of wood, stick them on, add a handle. I think they're a fun project. I like that they're wipeable, but I don't think I wouldn't be running out and buying these to stick them all over my backsplash. And I definitely wouldn't put these in a bathroom. I don't think they'd last. So just my honest opinion on them, but for a tenor and a little experiment in my little nook, I am happy with them. Also the pattern, hands up, I binge watch Sweet Magnolias and I love, um, oh, I can't remember her name, not Dana Sue. Uh, sorry for my <laughs> terrible accent. Uh, the girl with the ginger hair. Well, her kitchen, I love her little kitchen. Well, not a little about her actually. She has tiles in her kitchen and they're kind of like Moroccan-ish. And the Moroccan tile, you know what? I don't think things ever go out of date. I just think you wait long enough and they come back around. But I did kind of think, oh, the Moroccan tile is getting a bit, you know, dated, but I saw them in her kitchen and I was like, they're actually lovely. Um, so that's why I went for this because I was like, oh, they remind me of the ones from Sweet Magnolias. So yeah, hands up if you watch that program. I'm right, I binged the whole thing. So I didn't watch it for ages and my friends were telling me to watch it. And then I did and I just binged <laughs> the whole, like, is it two seasons? Yeah, loved it. Now, I wanna answer some questions and some suggestions that were on the original video, um, and there was some really good ones. So one of them was to change the door on the washing machine, so change the side it opens, and that's a great idea, so it would open the other way so I could get in better. So I had a look at the machine and I Googled the model, and I can't do that on my make, so I have a smaller washing machine because the nook is smaller and it fits better, and it's grand, you, can, you still get a lot in it, but I can't change the side on that one because there is something to it, an electrical current, let's not. <laughs> Let's not do that. So I couldn't do that on this model, but on some models of washing machines, um, you can flip it so that it opens the other side. That was a good suggestion. Um, another suggestion was, so first of all, this is a budget fix. And I love watching, actually one of my new things is watching No Demo Reno. No Demo Reno, I think she's so good. I watch it on Discovery Plus. It's a HGTV program. And I think I'm on like episode seven of like that series that's on, that is available to me. And she basically doesn't like knock walls down because she makes such a good point. So you can knock walls down in your house in Ireland 
without well don't quote me on this if you you need plan planning permission to like extend and add windows and stuff to the front but supporting walls so like a wall like this which is a support wall because like, people be like oh do a pony wall or do something and um, so this is a, a big support and wall and the stairs are above it that go upstairs and i live in a dorm or bungalow um so I have two bedrooms downstairs and the big one upstairs with an ensuite. So I have a weird layout anyway, but this wall, to even get someone out and do an architectural thing, it's no longer a budget fix. And I'm totally fine with having the tiny laundry nook. It's a quirk of my house. I mean, I'm not like six foot. I can fit in it, it's fine. <laughs> um, I also got like a smaller fridge because the pink fridge that I painted pink years ago, love that fridge, but it died died during the, was it like 20, 21 I think it broke and um, it was too big for that area so I actually got a smaller fridge so by getting a smaller sized fridge and a smaller washing machine I have freed up some floor space and also there is um, a big skirting board and a couple people were saying to cut into that to put the uh, fridge flush to get an extra couple of feet but there is piping that runs along there because and um, the piping for the washing machine is there and then there's like a, a what you call it that's where the waste pipe runs out into the drain that's in the garden so all good ideas but i just wanted to give some feedback as to why i didn't take them on board because yeah structural and piping and things like that one thing i think i will do and i ordered some cord is to make a little curtain for the washing machine and I think it will make for a really quick sewing video just how to put a little curtain over something and I think I'll just use a lightweight fabric I might have a rummage through the hot press because I reckon I would have like an old bed sheet or something that I could use um, that, that I could just repurpose some old fabric to do it but definitely I'm thinking like maybe a little white curtain or like a thin linen stripe or something, you know that fabric, it's a bit Frenchy. Yeah, I think a little curtain over the washing machine and that I can just pull back, um, cause there's enough room here, like on the left hand side for the curtain to be pushed back and not obstruct. So I don't wanna add clutter to the area, but I do think maybe a little curtain would be cute over the washing machine. Hey, sure, it'll make for an informative video anyway because I know some people have their appliances like out in their kitchen, whatever way this was plumbed and made. Um, and I've seen people put like little curtains over them um, just to take the look off, you know, the appliances. I have no built in um, appliances like most modern houses do, just my cooker is there, that's it. So, thumbs up if you dream of one day having, oh my god, I look at utilities faces on like YouTube videos and like Instagram and like, I don't have a dryer, I air dry everything. <laughs> so to have them, they have them stacked, they have them beside each other, they have countertops in them. Their utility rooms are like my kitchen, probably like oh, a mud room. That's like a utility slash boot room would be the dream. <laughs> you know you made it when you've got a boot room. <laughs> For now, it is the tiny laundry nook. In and out, no messing about. That rhymed. That wasn't meant to rhyme. So, you know the drill. Cheeky thumbs up and if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the subscribe button and do check out my other videos.